We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I sure appreciate it. We've got a lot of guests. And, uh, pretty long agenda, but not too long. And, uh, we'll just uh, take care of business as it comes up. But once again, thank you all for coming. Let's have our Pledge of Allegiance. And then Brother Jeff's going to read us in our prayer. Father, we're grateful for the beautiful day. We thank you for the community in which we live. We thank you for the freedoms and liberties that allow us to govern ourselves and be a part of the governing process. We pray for those in leadership and ask that you give them wisdom. As members of the community, may we uh, do our part to contribute uh, to having the best community that we can. Heavenly Father, as a community that has a, a community college campus, we uh, want to join uh, with the nation uh, for those who have lost loved ones uh, in Oregon. We, we pray for that community and uh, cannot imagine the pain and difficulty that they've experienced. Uh, we ask that you help us as a nation to appreciate our freedoms, uh, but may we also uh, respect each other uh, and uh, be able to live uh, in peace with one another. Uh, we are grateful again. We pray for the meeting tonight and ask your blessings upon it. I uh, lead, guide, and direct in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate the come. Pray for us. <clears throat> First thing we have tonight is a public uh, hearing, and this is on a rezoning for Mike and Karen Harris. They have a property on uh, 398 Laurel Lane, and several weeks ago had a uh, house fire actually at their house, and there's a turned out to be a total loss. And in order for them to what they want to do is they met with the zoning board several weeks ago, uh, probably a couple of weeks after the fire, and uh, about possibly rezoning that property so they can put a mobile home there. And uh, after meeting with the zoning board, they unanimously agreed to do that. We've let it run in the paper appropriately, and tonight is an opportunity for the public to ask any questions to have about that particular property before we vote on it. The actual rezoning. If there's any comments about that particular piece of property. It's actually, you go past what used to be Colby where Rustic River Homes is now, that, at the end of the street on the right. And uh, it's in an area that would not hurt to have a mobile home there. They've talked to the property owners around that property, and I don't care if you got anything to add. It's, uh, the road that was closed off. Yes. It is, right past our house, the road was closed. Yes. Because okay. it, it would have wound around and come back on to see if you had the bridge, but that road since then closed. Mm -hmm. Yes, we really sure did. So it's in a, in a place that would be, I think, appropriate and it would be fine. If there's any questions from anybody else, this is now the time to ask. Okay. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. Uh, First thing is recommendation to approve the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, number two is a recommendation to approve the council payable bills. Would there be a motion to approve those council payable bills? I 
some questions and they all were appropriate, so I make a motion we approve. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, very thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Number three is the recommendation to approve the ordinance number 2015-8 for rezoning of 398 Laurel Lane. This would be <coughs> uh, whereas the uh, Code of Alabama 1975 has amended uh, sections 11-5270 through 11-4284 empowers the city of Hampton to enact the rezone ordinance and provide for its administration enforcement and amendment for the purpose of uh, promoting the health and general welfare. And whereas the proposed amendment is reasonable with consideration, among other things, to the character of the district and its particular suitability for particular use, and with the view of conserving the value of buildings and encouraging most appropriate the use land use throughout such municipality, and be it, and, and this be ordained by the city of Hampton, Hampton, Alabama, at parcel 49-0907-35-4. Zero 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 dash zero six four point zero zero one located adjacent to Lower Lane is hereby rezoned from R one residential to F A R, and this would allow you to do uh, put the mobile home there. Plus, it would have to be conformed to R C ordinance, which you know the code that uh, Marty gave you that has to be so many can't be so many years old, right. front back porch and things like that. So uh, you have a copy of that. So be it further ordained that this ordinance shall become effective upon final reading and publication of public health, safety, and welfare requirement. Uh, would there be a motion to make this approve this ordinance? We need to have immediate consideration first. Okay. Let's do that. So I'll make a motion for immediate okay. consideration. That's beautiful. I'll second. All in favor say aye on immediate consideration. Aye. Okay. Right now, then, let's move on. Is there a motion that this, this uh, ordinance be adopted? I'll make a motion that we adopt the ordinance. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. That didn't hurt you, guys, did it? Appreciate that. Thank you all very much. I know. Are you ready to move in? No. <laughs> Forget it. We're fine. Okay. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Good luck very much. We appreciate nice. y'all being patient. Thank you. I know that you Yes, ma'am. I want to thank all the people in the city of Hamilton and beyond and all the churches. Everyone, the love, the support, and the outpouring of support and prayers has just been very overwhelming. And we just wanted to thank everybody. Thank you. God bless you. I knew the next day after the fire, when you come to my office, you already had clothes donated. Yes. Place to stay, and it just happened within a few hours. Yes. Um, people just opened their hearts and their it wallets was. and everything else. Because when you lose everything, uh, I think you lost a pet too, didn't you? Two pets. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, that's tough. That's tough. But you can restart. You got your lives. Amen. So, we thank God for that. I know you do. Well, thank, thank you. Thank God for Good you. Thank, thank you so much. Good luck to you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number four is a recommendation to approve a contract with Bagby Company for the elevators at New City Hall location of Bagby Company who has the lowest bid price to perform maintenance and help keep the elevators to the National Elevator Safety Code for $279 a month. We had another bid from a company called Otis, O-T-I-S, but they were $275 a month, a little bit cheaper, but it was for five years, and we felt like a one-year contract would be better for us at this time. So it would actually be cheaper for one year than the five years. So in the, the five-year contract actually increased a little bit each year. So this will be better for us. Uh, Andrew has looked at it inside and out, and uh, this is not only her recommendation, but mine too. So it will be a motion to go into a contract with this company, back to the company for two seventy nine dollars a month. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. The same company also had a, a bid to repair the current elevators and bring them up to National Elevator Code. The cost of this will be $3,500. Um, Andrew, is there anything you could add to that? 
that they looked at it, one of them is not working at all, and it has to have some oil and things brought up to make it work, and the other one just needs a little tweak. That's right. Okay. Okay. Would this be a long, and I think long you have a uh, repair project, or is it fairly, could move along the expedition? Uh, I believe the operating elevator needed uh, some replacement on the emergency line. Previously, needs the oil added and then just uh, checks run on that. Right. So, yeah. the, actually, the bank wasn't using but one elevator. They had completely shut one down. So, this was to bring both bits up and have both working. That's right. Both maintained. Okay. So, we have wrote on a recommendation to approve this contract and to repair the uh, elevator for $3,500. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Number six at this time, we're just going to disregard number six. We'll make come back to it in a couple of weeks and give another um, local business a chance to bid on that. So we're just going to bypass number six for now. Uh, number seven is a recommendation to hire. Jordan Carter as a recruit for the Hamilton City Police Department. Starting rate of pay would be 1486 per hour. Uh, Ron, would you like to add the reason what we're doing tonight and uh, say something about Mr. Jordan? Yes, sir, Mr. Jordan will be a replacement officer. I had a, uh, an officer turn in an abrupt resignation as of that particular day, which was the 23rd of September. Uh, Mr. Jordan checked with our city attorney and on the last interviews and the process that we had, we had 11 that had passed the test and stuff, so that pool is where we went back to select Jordan to come out of it to take the position as open. Okay. <coughs> and that is your recommendation. I know you and I met with Jordan, talked with him for a pretty long time. Um, now he's not acting up, is he? No. No, okay. I think you would end up uh, going into the academy January 5th. I think it's the next starting date. Would our current officer be out by then? Yes, Colin. Maybe uh, middle of November. Okay. And this, and, and, and Jordan would go into training, in-house training and everything from now until his time, oh. or his time to start with us, until time to start with the academy. So Jordan is my recommendation, Jordan Carter is my recommendation to replace the officer that resigned recently. Sir, you're going to have a problem with that. I think Jordan is well deserved. Uh, local hometown young man, and uh, he's been not only around the police for, since he was a kid, fire department, and a volunteer firefighter, also worked at the fire station, I think, through high school through their program. He's so, done a lot of volunteer. Highly recommended, and uh, yeah, I ask for a motion to approve this recommendation. I'll make a motion to approve it. Yes, we need that in the minutes too. 20th of October. Is that right, Jordan? 19th or Monday? Is the 19th? The 19th Monday. Yes. Okay. 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 Chief, while we got you standing up there, we just went over some things in a <clears throat> work session about uh, some items that you're requesting tonight for discussion and those on what the council would feel comfortable voting on. Uh, what would you be, uh, let me find what we had. We talked about some radars, we talked about some computers, oil cars, printers. Uh, if you would, I'll just turn it back over to you. 
What I'm asking for tonight on computer laptops, the laptops we have in our uh, patrol units, the ones that do the e-citation, the uh, e-crash, stuff of this nature that we have to be online with with the state of Alabama, the computers that are in those cars are 09 and older. So whenever these new Dodges were bought, then those older computers and everything were transferred over into these vehicles and stuff. Also, was some of the uh, radar units and stuff that were transferred over into it. Some of the radar units that have become incapacitated stuff of this nature, you can't buy parts for anymore. China bought the company that owns them. Um, so they're, they're kind of outdated them and updated the electronics and what we did have. So what I'd like to ask for tonight is 10 Dell computer laptops with solid state hard drives. And these are not fancy computers. They don't have cameras. Know, DVD players and stuff of this nature on them. They're used for the purposes of working in patrol units. Dale has given us a 48% discount where the state gives us 10% below cost discount on it. And those 10 computers would total $22,408.20. Also, in addition to that, in the uh, Funds being appropriated could possibly, if you didn't be it, come out of a separate fund, a drug fund, for the, uh, the thermal, direct thermal printers that go with each one of them. I need seven. I have three. I need seven to complete the ten with new printers at $2,379.93. And then out of the same fund, also, ten rugged desktop. desktop Docking stations at $2,449 for each one of those stations, or for each one of those units. In addition to 10, no, excuse me, seven stalking, stalker radar units, which would go into vehicles that we have right now that don't have radars in them. What's the line for uh, a radar? Usually, um, depending on how much it's so. Uh, actually, the care. Well, I mean, we have rare the, the care and the, the, uh, the type of mechanism inside of it. The uh, digital. We have them checked every year for their accuracy and everything. Um, these would be twelve hundred or twelve thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents, and there would be stalker. There'd be somebody that we could be able to contact get these things worked on with no problem whatsoever if we need it. I think the units that we have currently that have quit on us some 07 models, 08 models, something of that nature. So you're looking at seven years, seven, eight years. Do you have a local, this says coming out from Plano, Texas, do you have local people that are closer to that that do the maintenance? I mean, I would think so. On the stopper? I think that there's local people closer than Plano, Texas. Some of them, we pack them up and ship them to, oh, you, oh, a, I see. to okay. a center, and they go back to them with all their electronic devices. I didn't know if they came in and did that. They don't come in calibrated okay. and make sure they're working. You have to send them off to do that. No. Once they come in, they're operational. They've been checked by the factory, calibrated, ready to operate, and then they come in annually with a certified uh, guy that comes in and calibrates them, reach it, recertifies them. And they us. come here to do that? Yes. Well, we do them all the same day. When, when you get the radar and you put it in, can can we do that, or do we have to have uh, crews or somebody? I mean, some maintenance people to do all this. We can all put, these things. We can put them in, or we can have a uh, a tech, the certification tech to come in. And that will come do the here and do that. We'll come here and do all the same day. Some of the computers, that, the laptop computers that we use for our e-site crash and e-move and stuff of this nature, the software and stuff in it is not updatable for us to stay online with the state right now. And we have worked and passed them to about as far as they're going to go. Well, I realize what are we that doing it now? expedites the process on to Montgomery. Mandating. I have one unit that's actually using a personal laptop. Well, I have said from the beginning, I want the best equipment 
for the employees, for them to be reliable, to take care of our citizens, and to be safe themselves, uh, among other people. I don't know of a better investment. It's just that I, I have a little problem, and you and I have talked about this, about everything sort of just coming in at once and wearing out at once. You know, I, I hope that we can get in the, the routine of uh, doing a little at, at a time, or maybe not so much a little, but some every year, so that this will never happen again, you know. Uh, we thought at one time we were buying the best vehicles in the world, and they have not held up. And I, I still, again, want to stress the police guys, you know, drive carefully. Uh, treat it like it's your own, because it's the taxpayers are paying for this. Uh, I don't have any problem with any of this. It's either do a little now, and you do a little later, or you get everything now, and it's all taken care of, and we can move on to something else. And that's that's basically what I'm for, is for the uh, radars and the uh, printers, the desk dock. The desk dock and the printers could come out of a... I, I realize that will come out of another fund, and, and we're not, we don't, we don't have to approve that to come out of his uh, other fund yeah. that will be where we would have to approve that, but would it not be two separate motions would or would it be one? It would be one to come out of the... Drug. Now that's just my opinion. So, I mean, Greg and Jamie, and you know, others are not here, so... <clears throat> I, I can't see putting somebody out there and not having a quilt to take care of, of their responsibility. And I explain, I think, in the working session that our supervisors are very conservative and the reason sometimes the reason we get all at one time is because they're, they've kind of held off a basket and they think well I hate to ask for this I hate to ask for that and then all of a sudden you've got all at one time and I, I commend our supervisors because they're the reason that a lot of times we come under budget and equipment and right. maintenance and they just not constantly asking for something they're pretty pretty shy about asking for I mean making sure that uh, you know they just do a little at a time so sometimes it does come down to try and get all at once it was done on purpose but that's just the way it worked out but it's not right to have the money there right. and let people put their lives at risk and i just can't be a part of that uh, i don't like it because we're having to do all this at once but like i said that's just my opinion tan and greg's got one and, uh, on the desktops and the monitors. We're going to hold off on the desktops and the monitors yes, and just go with this quote number 7146-47039. Yes. Okay. That'll put you unit, that'll put laptop units in all of my operation control cars. Okay. So you probably need <clears throat> Scott, if we get if we get radars and if we get computers, does that need to be two separate? It's two separate prices. It's not unless you just combine it all. Uh, to make it near simpler, I do. To do what? Make it two different. Like a motion to approve the radars and a motion to approve the computers. You know, just and not bundle it all together. Clear. Make it clear for Ann's one and then send for us too.
unless we have one to go down. Right, I understand. Right. And and how often do you have them uh, uh, maintenance or on any of this, or is it required? Or as it required. Uh -huh. We have we try to keep our updates as required. Also, it was given us. 12 months McAfee antivirus included with the systems. And then, like I said, a 48% approved discount on the laptops. So we would have three different, ask for three different uh, purchases. Three purchases, yes, sir. If that's what they need. You can't run it without it, right? We can go back. We can do it by hand. The state Brown's almost turning them in as far as putting them in with their stats so that they come up with how many tickets the state of Alabama rights and stuff of this nature may not get put in on all of that. The direct reports they want us to be crashed. What's the wishes of the council? Motion to, uh, well, I make a motion that we do the radars, and is that all that's coming out of that? Is that the one? Well, the radars and the computers still come out of the police. The right. Equipment fine, but okay. it's going to be two separate. Scott's, uh, Scott's going to be better for two years. Make a motion to do the radars. Then okay, the I make a motion we do the radars. The okay. seven radars. Right. 12, Scott, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. At 12. Six eight seven fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a motion to approve uh, purchase of seven radars for twelve thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars. I'll second it, Wayne. Greg, second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 That takes care of the radars. There will be a motion to purchase the uh, 10 computers for the police cars. It's 22. Okay, this one. Discussion on those? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Angela, you're getting this? Okay. I've got it here. Too. And one last thing uh, for the uh, computers would be <clears throat> the seven docking stations, is that correct? No, oh, seven printers. Ten uh, docking stations and seven. Ten docking stations for the computers and seven printers. Both of them added up twenty three seventy nine ninety three and twenty four forty nine ninety. Let's add that up real quick. So that's what will be coming out of the drug fund. That's correct. Right. Okay. All right. I make a motion. We approve that. Second. 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 The printers, seven printers, they have some that work. They don't have to have 10. So seven printers, 23, 79, 93. And 10 of the docking stations for the computers, so for each computer have a docking station, is 24, 49, 90. So I just need a total of both of them. It's 48, 29, 83. 48, 29, 83. And that would be coming out of drug fund instead of the general fund. That should get you in pretty good shape. Yes, sir. Okay, I made the motion. 
and Francis has made a motion to purchase the Assad drug fund. Would there be a second? I'll second. Okay, great. Any other discussion on these? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Ryan? I don't think you need to ask him for a while. No, <laughs> don't come back. You got your Christmas tonight. Francis says ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Appreciate that. Uh, Chief Rye. What Tim is asking, uh, you give an update on the two fire trucks, Tim, while you're coming. I yeah, think they should be here at the end of the month. Talk to David, and uh, we have a trip October the 20th. We leave and go down and do final inspection on the two trucks. Take about a day and a half, two days to get all that done. And then once we get that done, I would say within a week, week and a half, they'll have to drive them up and go through their process. Where did they come from? They come from Florida. Around Tampa, Florida. And, uh, and they'll bring them up to Birmingham and they'll bring them on to us. So I'm thinking somewhere around the end of October, 1st of November, they should be here. So we bought them out of Cumbia, Birmingham, but they're actually made, right. made in, Florida. in Florida. In Florida, okay. You yes. said they had really been keeping you up to date, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, each week they get an email on it. Weekly? Well, that's great. Pictures. So they've got it. Plan for us to go down on the 20th and to take about a day and a half to do both trucks and do the final inspection on them. And once we sign off on that, then they'll start the way north. Okay. Towards us. All these numbers are divisible by two, but we're just equipping one. Let me explain that. Okay. On that, this is some equipment will go on some of the trucks we have now. We didn't, all of our trucks wasn't 100% ISO compatible. So when I asked for that 45,000 and the bond money, that, that goes to get everything ISO compatible on all the trucks that we have now. We're only going to be equipping one complete truck. One new truck one and the rest of this stuff goes on. Right, on different, it, some of it may go on engine one, some of it may go on 27. That's why there was several numbers on there. When do we equip that? We're going to use it off there. Our reserve truck, we got that away through. You didn't get a total of the price. You got no, a cost I, of I, you're working it, on that. It's anywhere between twenty and 25000 for the equipment. And then we're going to buy some air packs. And there are $7,000 a piece. So that's how, many air, how many air packs do you we'll have? To have so what you're asking is permission to be getting the equipment ready when the, by the time the truck gets yeah, here, take, will you have time to, I mean, when the truck gets here, the equipment, will this still be ordered or still Well, be I hope to have it at the station ready to be put on until they get here. So you're wanting us to approve because you don't know how much it is? Well, I'll have to sign. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send out, like, for all the hoses. You're sending out a bid package. Three or four different companies that will send out. I just need permission to do that. You want permission to find out how much it's going to cost? that's what okay. you're asking. You have my permission. Yeah, I've been through this before on other stuff. You study. think by the next meeting you'll, what, what Tim's going to do is package that and we'll send it to about three different people. What you, what you want to do, Tim, is package the equipment, send it to two or three different people, and then get a quote on that, and hope by the next meeting you'll be able to get that approved. But you should be able to get a price. Well, maybe. Well, that's two weeks. Yeah, maybe. They should be able to give you a quote within two weeks. What you're asking for, not sure, and just permission to go ahead and pursue. The I mean, we talked, we process. had this. Yes. It was the right. bond. Well, we knew we'd have to yeah. equip it once we got yeah. the trucks, and the trucks are almost here, so there's no question. We need to be equipment on it. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I'm motion. We we'll go ahead and give Tim permission to go ahead and get the bids on all of these items so that we can have it here and get these truck equipped and the old Okay. Right. Is there a second? All in favor, say aye. Thank you. Sure. Or after we do all this and go 
talk about the fire station in a little while. Are we pretty much going to be up to date? All of our men are out of school and ready to go. No, they still off? haven't been to school yet. We had a class. They were supposed to go to most shows. That class did not make, so they're in line to go to the next class. How many? Two. I mean, two more. When? What's the next third? We won't know until the fire college sets the dates. It's back in the cloud now. But they can work up to how long before they go to school? A year. So they'll be in school. We'll have them, yeah. We'll yeah have them. Okay. So they still count on the ISO yes. rating, even yes. though they haven't been to school? Yes. Yes. And Tim, tell us about that. How's it going? You, I so far, you keep them informed of what yeah, we're doing. Yeah, I've been doing. sending them emails to one guy, keep them informed of what we're doing, and everything's still good. We can't do what we say. Okay. All right. Okay. That helps insurance go, insurance rates. Okay. When you're compliant. And they give us so much time to stay compliant. Mm -hmm. And they know we're working on it, so we're. we're in compliance so far. Yes. How long is it town from from one time when they you become compliant? We talked about this one that was Mr. Hatton that was here. It used How to be they would show up once every twenty years. Now they they will show up one year and the next two years they'll call you on the phone and see if anything's changed, uh -huh. nothing's changed. You go on, but the third year they'll be back. So once every three years they're coming to see you. Okay. Or if it used to be once ever 15 to 20 years. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Um, Cotton? Your turn. My turn. Um, Sarah, what we did, um, I can talk just for mental Rodney is here. Um, we've known quite some time that the truck that Brian Logan has drove, a service truck, uh, he's about 20 years old and has up 200,000 miles on it. Has finally pretty much quit and uh, just not worth fixing. And what we asked Rodney to do, or I asked Rodney to do a couple of weeks ago, was let's just see about getting what a truck costs. And Rodney, I'll turn it over to you and let you talk about that. We got heat uh, from Cooley Mills and Cable, was sent out a proposal for us to three or four different dealerships. He didn't charge us anything to do that, but we had a uh, Pacific type truck with some specs, sending out three or four dealers. And last week we had two bids come in, one from Fikes and one from Carl Cannon. And, and Fikes Chevrolet actually had the lowest bid, so right now I'll let you talk. We've got these bids in front of us. Uh, as y'all all know, about two months ago, Brian's truck went out, the engine went out in the truck. We decided to equip them feasible to spend the money to fix the engine. What year is it? It's a 96 model. It's 20 years old. This will be 20. It's over 200,000. So, as the mayor said, we did a, we had a, had a bid opening on September 30th. And we had two bids. Um, and the, re the main reason I wanted to go ahead and pursue this, I had it, I've got it in my budget for this next year for, for the truck. Uh, I contacted dealerships and they have found a truck, it's a 15 model, which is a brand new truck. Uh, with the service bed already on it, uh, we can get, and that's the bed you have for the 15 model. Uh, if we waited till later on, we would have to go with a 16 model, which would even be more money. We actually found this one. It's already out there with a bed on it. There's a 15 on it. What's, what's Brian using that one though? He's using one of the old meter reading trucks he had for the last two months. It's just not the best condition in the world, but that's what he's been using. Well, we know all along that a little at a time we'll try to replace some trucks. We've got two meter reader trucks this past year, um, four or five months ago. And I told the mayor that's been my goal is I want to I want to put in maybe one truck a year till we get some, some better equipment. How do you get 
do we stand there? Are we with getting this one? Do we in fair shape? It will help or do we need, Pardon? It will help tremendously. What's going to be the next? I mean, have we got other older ones that you have to put your foot out to use as a break? Well, I, I gave y'all a list back. <laughs> Last time we were doing a budget of, of all the equipment I had, how many miles it had on it, what mile it was, and everything. And most every truck has well over 100,000 miles. Some, most, several of them have 200,000 or more. And what Rodney wants to do is just a little like, we realize we're not be able to get another truck this year, but hopefully next year. And like you say, if we try to do it every now and then, we won't be buying several at one time. Right? And that's the reason Ronnie's. The chiefs ask about police cars and doing just a little at a time because the last time they bought police cars they bought 10 or 12 other ones and 10 well you know we simply can't afford to do that at one time so we just get one every now and then The reason I wanted to go ahead and, and push the issue was we, we can get a 15 model right now a lot cheaper than we can wait and get a 16 model right. Because this one's already got the service bed on it, but you know, if we don't get it tonight and wait two or three months, you're going to get a 2016, it's going to be more. And this is when they happen to find it's already just like we want, just ready to go. Yeah. That, was, I, that was the reason. Am I taking it? Canada is 4,000. No, but if you, if you look ahead, uh, there's 29,105 to the left of that column right there. So we just Canada and the fights. The 35 yeah, includes so. with the bed, but if you look on that column there on the left hand side, 29,105 was the fox bid on the truck. Carl Kennedy's bid was 31,350 on the truck. Do but that final one with the bed, mm -hmm. so it makes it a little bit more. Yes. So they've got it. Well, it's actually not cheap to get in on the truck. That's what you and, and that's all that has to be. There's nothing else that has to be added to it. Okay. Well, I'd entertain a motion to purchase this for the water department. Is there a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Why don't we understand? I'm voting for yes. And obviously, great abstain because working for the Fox family. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we get to Emily, let me let uh, Andrea give us an update. Just a quick like, and then we're going to talk with Emily about the fire station and, and what we're going to have to do tonight on it. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate you coming. You, you're good to send the council updates about what, how we're going on the progress. If you would just kind of you know, come forward or stay right um, there where you are. Oh, can't hear you back there. <laughs> oh, okay. We work pretty close the other day just to write on this thing from Right. Um, today we held our roofing conference at the city hall the future city hall and uh, all went well and workers will be present tomorrow conducting the re-roofing of the connection area and replacing the wood that's rotten around the edges of the building and uh, that all should take place this week given good weather and so we're real excited that that's going to take place pretty quickly um, we also um, are getting some budget numbers on the exterior work that includes the paving and the painting and then also budgets on the interior work and uh, that should be able to be presented in the next couple of weeks when will they start with the as soon as it's approved yeah. they can uh, they call them in the morning to get set up do the repairs first and then uh, the maintenance agreement will be in place, and then the state inspector will need to come and follow up behind that work and, and make sure it's operating properly. I 
Thank you for keeping us up to date. You're welcome. Andrew, how's the design on the inside? Is it pretty much complete? Going. Have something to show us pretty soon? Real well. I hope to have it mid October. That's okay. what I was hoping. Less um, normal. So, to the late October. And uh, we're doing reviews of the coats and um, some structural work. Structural engineers coming this week? This week. Okay. This week, okay. So. And when he does, we want to look at the coat. It's a project at the ready. And he is coming this week. Now, do you have to uh, stay in touch with the historical, uh, is it the state historical yes, society have, regarding all of these uh, renovations? I made a phone call to the uh, historical commission and went over all the changes that we have planned and they approved and, and they said everything is in order for that. So, good. we're in good, good standing. Okay. Right. Thank you, Andrew. on the uh, fire station, what day was that? The 17th, I believe. September? 15th. 15th. September. Okay. And the bids, uh, one was uh, 927 from Dimac, which is Jerry Dyer uh, company, your local one was h and Construction, 943000 So what we, Scott informed me today that what he thought the reason what we needed to do was rebid the project because it's over half a million dollars and it didn't, we didn't advertise statewide. Is that correct, Scott? Yes, sir. You had anything? We just need to vote to reject the bids and then we did. Okay. Let's do that, Eamon, and then we're going to turn it back over to you, okay? Okay. Right. We need a motion to to reject the bids and rebid the uh, fire station. Is that correct, Scott? Yes, sir. Okay. I make a motion that we reject these bids okay. and rebid it okay. statewide. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, great. Any discussion on that? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Heidi, right, I'm going to let you just tell us what, 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 you, what your thoughts and well, what I've, we can do, maybe. I've been able to talk to Jerry quite a bit on the um, what he was doing. He is here tonight, but he... I have talked to him. Danny's here. Danny. <laughs> I mean, Danny, I'm here. Danny's here tonight. And I wasn't able to talk to them about um, what they recommended. And they did submit some solutions to change um, that add up to about $100,000. So there were some other things throughout the project that I think we can kind of change and maybe get some better numbers on. So um, right now, with us rebidding, it'll just take me. Uh, I'll have to go through and redo the drawings to, to reflect these changes for us to be able to submit it back out to the public for for bids again, um, which shouldn't take too long, but it'll take me a week or so um, at best to, before to get we send out. that out. Excuse me. Before we send that out, will you you go and meet with us and let us look at it again before we? Yeah, there's have, a few so things. So the council will be aware of all the changes in design right. and anything like that. Most of the changes you wouldn't really ever know were different. One of the ones um, that they suggested was changing the roof to a slightly different roof, um, which, you know, reflects in the specifications, not really in the drawings. It's not going to look any different. Um, still a good roof, still comes with a warranty. It's just a different grade roof than what I had specified. I mean, that knocks off a pretty good amount. Um, then there's just some other um, things in there, but I'd certainly walk through you with what those changes are, but there's um, you know, in terms of the look, there's not a lot that will change from what you've seen, and there won't be anything that changes in the actual plan itself, um, but there will be changes to the specifications, which is where most of the money was. Do you think um, block versus metal or brick or? Well, we talked about that um, when the bids came in. We asked. Um, about the numbers because it was over budget, um, what we thought it would be, and um, 
talking with them, they didn't, regardless if it were hall, um, a metal building versus block and brick, by the time you have to add the necessary structural requirements for being a fire station or an IBC 2006 code, the cost difference is not that great between a metal building. It's not like you can just put a metal building up and be done with it. There are structural requirements um, because it is a fire station and under the code those are required to have um, more structural stability than just a regular metal building. So even if we build a building like we have now, uh, that would currently meet what has been passed since then? That's correct. You can't build what you have now um, and it has the code. Not that there's anything wrong with the building you right. have now. It's well, that's what most everybody has. Right. It just doesn't meet the current code requirements that the city has adopted. Changes all the time, doesn't it? It does. And, and actually, the 2006 code is a good code to work with. It's better than some current versions. I had understood there was something about the uh, block versus some brick. Would those block, uh, could, would that be scored or would it just be, would it be up there and painted or? The block well, that we just have, for curiosity, what the block that we had have chosen is, um, it's not a standard block like this. It's a okay. split phase so, block, so okay. it's kind of got that cut look to Fine. it. So okay. it won't look like this on the outside. It will have some dimension to it, so that it doesn't look like a big box sitting okay. there. They did have a suggestion to delete the brick. Um, I'm not quite there yet because I think if you delete the brick, it's going to stand out more in that kind of area that you have back there. DHR has some brick on it and. Several other buildings over there have a, a brick look to them, and just because we want to kind of stay true to the vernacular of the other buildings around sure. there, I'm not exactly sure that I would take that deletion just the yet. Cost wise. The, the cost of the brick was $18,000 for us to delete it and go with just block. Um, so it is a, a fairly large number on what they propose to change. Um, but in the end run, I'm not sure that that's the best deletion at right now. It may be that, that may be where we decide to go, but um, out of all the ones that they submitted, that's the one that I'm the least um, excited about taking. Let's just put it that way. But the rest of the deletions that they had and changes, um, I don't have any problem with. And I talked to Wade about a couple of them um, early on saying, you know, I knew that they were an upgrade, but also t t taking the fact that it was going to be an unmanned station um, where maintenance may not be a top priority for that building, I'd selected some finishes and things that would upstand low maintenance or no maintenance at all. Um, but, you know, if it's going to save a substantial amount of money, then you just have to maintain the building, you know, otherwise. So. But that was one of the reasons that some of the finishes were selected was just so that we could, um, you know, you pay a bigger price up front, but in the end run, you have a better building that you don't have as much work to take care of down the road. So when you come back, you're going to show us a proposal that takes into consideration all these things withdrawn. Are you going to show us a proposal that's just bare minimum? Um, all the things that you don't want to take There's down. not a lot in that building right now to begin with. Um, it's pretty bare bones now. There, you know, the thing that they had on here um, to change the ceramic tile, you know, we can change that to a, a very standard low grade, what's called a group one tile and be fine with it. Um, and it didn't take a lot of money off, but it's the little things that will kind of just kind of add up to that ticket and we'll um, go through and change and there's not a lot um, of extras in the building when you have to have the roll-up doors you have to have you know the, the big ticket items are are really not able to be taken out if that makes any sense electrical heating and cooling the electrical and, and the heating and cooling are not um, the big the ticket items they're not big ticket I think it's for the best, and we didn't. You didn't know. Nobody knew when we sent the bids out that it would come right. back more than what we what we expected. Right. So I mean, it's it's one of those things. But I, I think tonight we'll be. Right. 
I think what I, I would like to ask for tonight is just permission to go ahead and, and rework the drawings and, and get those ready to advertise as soon as we can, you know, get that out. Do you think you could have those at next meeting or would it be like maybe the first I November? think so, yeah. Two, no, I think we should be able to meet, uh, meet two weeks from tonight. I don't see that being a problem with being able to get those um, back out. And then once you re-advertise, it'll be another 30 days before you can accept bids on it. So. And then when they start, it could be with the winter months coming up. We may it's have not to a great time to start a building. No, it's with not. A lot we of may concrete. have to extend the days, even right. days to finish the project because right. um, they won't work in the winter months. Right. Well, you can only like you can do concrete work. Yeah, um, masonry work do. is you've got to be above 40 degrees pretty much to be able to do that. So right. we're moving into the winter and it's hard to do those. Mm -hmm. Come on, days. Come on, days. Once yeah. we approve it. And then it might be uh, a while before him gets the bid, it might be a while before they can start. Could put them in January starting, providing weather is okay. Yeah, it's good enough weather. Let me ask a clarification. I was thinking that it was going to be bid out statewide. Uh, well, we didn't. I mean, we, uh, oh, I think we just thought it was. Originally, we thought that. There are some requirements that you can just bid locally um, for two weeks, and we bid locally for four weeks, so um, or four runs, not four weeks, but four runs. Um, so we should have, and, and it doesn't have to be Birmingham. I'm assuming statewide, the Florence paper will um, do for the statewide. Scott, do you know where we need to do it in the Birmingham News? Just a statewide publication. Right. So, Times Daily does, I guess. Either one. I would put Birmingham News included though. Yeah. So they could get more bids. And, and so, you know, you know, more bids may create more competition. You never can tell. But it's always um, challenging when you rebid something to make sure that the interest is still there. So. Right. But well, we did have really good bids. I will say this that the bids came in. Um, yes really close originally they were six thousand dollars apart but i think uh, in the last minute before we opened bids um, dimac took theirs down another ten thousand to put them sixteen thousand dollars apart so they were, a bid that high um, and that close that together close is tells pretty, you both bid the same thing. they were all bidding the same thing yep. they knew what they were looking at yep. the same way so okay all right okay it's kind of for her to go ahead and or just give it to her or just put in the minutes to it. Either way, I think it's fine. But it's clear if you want to do a motion this much. But I think it's fine for it to ring. I think that's what everybody has to do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Is anybody else got an update? Ready to go home? If there's nothing else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Okay, great. Is there a second? I'll okay, Francis. Any discussion? All in favor, yeah.